everyone. Welcome to week number four. This week what we will be focusing on is going to be chapter three and chapter 56. Now chapter 56 is only going to be pages 1326 through 1333. I am only going to talk about uh, chapter three here in this video. I want you to make sure that you read chapter 56 on your own. It's not very many pages, and it will be very important for you to read that to help you with your discussion post this week as it deals with handling special needs patients. So let's talk about Chapter 3, which is dealing with medical law and ethics. And when we talk about medical law and ethics, it gets broken down into four different types of law. So there's criminal law, civil law, international law, and military law. Now really only two of those focus on and deal with the medical world, and that's going to be criminal law and civil law. So for the purpose of this video and quizzes that will come up, I'm only going to talk about those two specifically. So criminal law is, or are laws that are made to protect individuals and the public health as a whole from harmful acts of others. Criminal laws are broken down into two subcategories, and those two subcategories are going to be felonies and misdemeanors. Felonies are the more serious of the two, and felonies actually carry a punishment of either imprisonment in a state or local facility, or the death sentence. So very serious things you don't want to get wound up um, being accused of a felony. Some examples of a felony are things such as murder, rape, robbery, or in respect to the medical world, practicing without a license. Misdemeanors, on the other hand, are less serious. And what those are, are they carry a punishment of either one year in jail or imprisonment or fines. Okay. Some examples of a misdemeanor could be traffic violations, disturbing the peace, or theft. Now, when we talk about um, criminal laws, a physician has a license that they work with or under. They can have that taken away or revoked if they commit a criminal crime. What constitutes a crime uh, would be something such as sexual misdemeanors or sexual misconducts. They can be murders or violating uh, narcotics laws. Now it's important to understand that you as a medical assistant, you don't have a license. You have a certification or a registration, but you don't have a, a license. You work under that physician license. Now just because you work under a physician license does not entitle you to those rights. So you, as a medical assistant, cannot um, diagnose or treat patients. If you try or you get caught trying to diagnose a patient or treat a patient, you can actually pro be prosecuted or fined just like the doctor can. And even though you don't have a license, they can take away your certification or your registration. So please remember, it is not your job to try to diagnose and treat patients. Yes, you can carry out acts that the doctor orders, but you yourself cannot order them. Civil laws are laws that are really uh, dealing with a relationship either between two individuals or individual parties, or the individual and the government. Okay? Now, just like criminal laws, civil laws can be broken down into three subcategories. They're either tort laws, contract laws, or administrative laws. So let's kind of talk about each of those. Let's break those down so you get a better understanding of what each of those are. A tort law are laws that cover acts that result in harm to another. In regards to the medical world and in medical law, that means that you must cause damage or injury to a patient. That injury um, either has to come from a physician or one of his employees, like you as a medical assistant, or nurses, 
And you can be charged with either intentional tort or unintentional tort. Now, it's just like what it sounds like. Intentional means that you carry out an act intentionally without a patient's consent. Things that can fall into that are things such as assault, battery, false imprisonment, defamation of character, fraud, or invasion of privacy. Unintentional torts on the flip side are things that you don't mean to do, but they happen. Okay? For great example, negligence. You don't mean to do it, but it does tend it happens. Okay? In order to prove that negligence has taken place, you have to make sure that the four D's are proven by the plaintiff or the person who is accusing someone else. Okay? The four D's of neglect are duty, dereliction of duty, direct cause, and damages. Okay. Contract law, on the, on the other side, uh, so we talked about tort law, so a contract law is a law that includes enforceable promises or enforceable agreements between two or more persons to carry out or to not carry out a specific action or service. In order for a contract to happen, there are four parts that must be included. Those four parts are an offer, an acceptance, a consideration, and a competency. Now, in order for that contract to be a legal binding document, all four pieces must be present. If all four are not present, the contract is null and void and does not render legal. Administrative laws are the last law that fall under civil laws, and those really cover regulations that are set forth by governmental agencies. Now, most healthcare employees are frequently going to deal with uh, tort or contract laws, so I don't want to spend too much time on administrative, but I want you to have an understanding. Violations of uh, administrative law are things such as violating HIPAA, or Medicare or Medicaid fraud. Okay. The last piece to Chapter 3 that I want to talk about is malpractice. So a malpractice is any unreasonable lack of skill that results in an injury, a loss, or damage to a patient. Malpractice claims are really classified according to three types. Those three types are a malfeasance, a misfeasance, or a nonfeasance. Malfeasance is when you perform a wrongful act or an unlawful act. You do something that's against the law and it damages or injures the patient. A misfeasance is when you carry out a lawful act in a wrong manner. You do something wrong and it causes, even though it's something you can do, you do it wrong and it injures the patient. Example I always give, you go in for surgery, you're supposed to have your left foot amputated and the right one comes off. That's a misfeasance. Nonfeasance is really in terms of neglecting, ignoring, or rejecting or refusing to do a treatment that is a necessary lawful act. Okay. All right, so that's where I'm going to stop for this video, and I talked about some of the really big pieces for Chapter 3 for you guys. Please make sure, as always, that you're continuing to read your chapters in full. I ask you to do that because it's really going to help you understand better uh, not only this week's module, but the homework assignments that go along with it. This week you will also have another quiz. Your quiz is going to be based off of medical law and ethics. Again, this is an online quiz, but please wait until after class when we do our quiz review to take that. You have a 40-minute time limit for your quiz, and it is comprised of 30 multiple-choice or true-false questions. This week you will have one discussion post. Again, as I said at the beginning of the video, Chapter 56 is going to help you uh, create and understand this discussion post, so please make sure that you're reading that. Please make sure your initial post is posted by Tuesday at midnight and your two responses by Saturday at midnight. Also this week in the module you will see a lab activity. For the time being, I want you to please just ignore that. We're going to do part of it in class this week, and the other part will be an outside
project for you to work on. I will print off all the materials for class period so you don't have to worry about anything. Just come to class and we can discuss that then. And lastly, what I want to talk to you about is your written assignment. So your written assignment is broken down into two parts. Now just because it is two parts, I do not want two separate papers. I want one fluid paper that flows very nicely from part A to part B. Okay? Part A is really, you need to create an office policy. And there are four pieces to that office policy that need to be included. You will know what those are if you pull up the assignment in Angel and actually download that file. It will show you all four parts. And please make sure you're doing that. You make sure all requirements are in part one. Part B, or part two, is going to be comprised of you taking that office policy you created in section one, summarizing it, and teaching it to a new medical assistant. Again, there are four parts to this that you need to include, and you can, again, see those by pulling up the assignment in Angel. Now, if you have a hard time getting this started because you're not really sure what an office policy is or how to write it, please make sure you're researching that. You can always tell or you can always know uh, good sources and there's tons of examples out there for you to take a look at. So if you're having trouble getting it started, please do some research on an office policy and that will help kind of guide you towards how to start that. This assignment is worth 45 points, so it's a bit heftier than anything you've had before. So please make sure that you're really putting some time and effort into it this week uh, to get all the full credit. All right, guys, that's all I have for you. Please bring any questions or concerns that you have to class, or you can email me or um, call me. I will always answer your questions. If nothing else, I will see you guys on Wednesday. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Bye.